Hello, my name is Professor Mack. Welcome to my laboratory. Come and have a look at this. This is a Newton spring balance and it's a device which enables us to measure force. It has a fixed end which is used to support the balance and a free end which moves. So how does a spring balance measure force? Well, as my hand pulls the free end, it stretches a spring and in doing so, I can feel the spring applying a restoring force to my hand. In order to maintain the stretch of the spring, I have to apply a force equal and in the opposite direction to the restoring force generated by the spring. As I increase the stretch of the spring, I have to apply a larger force and as I do so, the spring applies an equal but opposite larger balancing force to my hand. So in a spring balance, there is a relationship between spring extension and applied force and therefore by measuring spring extension, we can measure applied force. In order to do this, we have to know the precise relationship between spring extension and applied force and to establish this relationship, we need to conduct an experiment. So as part of our experiment, we need to measure spring extension. You can see on the spring balance, we have a scale, which measures the extension of the spring in millimetres. We see that we have zero extension of the spring, as shown on the scale, when zero force is applied to the end of the spring balance. In order to establish the relationship between force and spring extension, we will plot these on a graph. The vertical axis will be the applied force F in Newtons and the horizontal axis the spring extension X in millimetres. The first point for us to plot on the graph is zero extension for zero applied force. If we now apply a force of 5 newtons to the spring balance by adding this mass, which has a weight of 5 newtons, we see that the spring extends by 50 millimetres. When the mass comes to rest, the applied force, which is a gravity force of 5 newtons vertically down, is being balanced by the restoring force of the spring, which is 5 newtons vertically up. So let's plot this point. That is 50 millimetres extension for an applied force of 5 newtons. Now let's add another 5 newtons to the spring. Can you guess how much it will extend? As you can see, it has extended another 50 millimetres, so that the total extension is 100 millimetres for a total force of 10 newtons applied to the spring. So let's also plot this point. Now you can see that the three points lie on a straight line. This is very important as it is the principle on which the spring balance works. It simply says that the relationship between force and extension is linear, and that is why the spring extended by the same amount each time we added 5 newtons force. This linear relationship between force and extension is known as Hooke's Law, after Robert Hooke, who discovered it in 1660. As Hooke's Law is a straight line, we may express this mathematically as the applied force F equals a constant K times the spring extension X. The constant K is known as a spring constant and is the ratio between the change in spring force for a change in spring extension. Mathematically, it is the slope of the line in the graph and it is a unique property of each spring. 
so you can calculate the spring constant by calculating the slope of the line. To do this for our spring balance, we divide 5 newtons force by 50 millimetres extension, which gives a spring constant K equal to 0.1 newtons per millimetre extension. This means that we can calculate the force on the spring balance using Hooke's law in the form force F equals 0.1 times the spring extension X. Now that we know the relationship between force and spring extension, we may use this to calculate the force applied for a measured value of spring extension. You can see on the spring balance we have an object of unknown weight. The object applies a force to the spring balance due to its weight. So let's use Hooke's law to see if we can predict the weight of the object. The spring balance shows the extension of the spring is 70 millimetres. So using Hooke's law for our spring balance, we predict that the force applied, which is the weight of the object, is 0.1 times 70 millimetres, which gives a force of 7 newtons. So let's see what the weight of the object is. Aha! It is just what we predicted. The weight of the object is applying a force of 7 newtons to the spring balance. Well there you have Hooke's law and the Newton spring balance. I hope you enjoyed learning about them. So from me, Professor Mack, until next time, all the best. Bye!